So let's talk about some examples with respect to risk and return. Um, here you see the standard deviation and total return for Apple for, uh, for this year, for 2019, starting from January 1st. So Apple standard deviation simply means the price deviations from its mean. So we take an average price of Apple since January the 1st of 2019 of daily prices. And then what is the average deviation around that average price, average daily price? That's your standard deviation. So Apple's standard deviation, daily return standard deviation is 0 0.016. And total return is 27.99%. So for this amount of risk, Apple provided us with this much return. This is since January the 1st of 2019. Now, this is an example of an equity with respect to risk and return. Now, if you look at a, a fixed income ETF, SHY, which is one to three year US Treasury, Standard deviation is significantly lower, 0 0.0006. And, you know, corresponding to that is the total return, which is also significantly less, which is about 1%. Now, Apple had 0.01.6 for the standard deviation and 28% of the total return since January 1st whereas the fixed income has significantly lower risk and significantly lower return. Now, for a year where the stock prices have declined, you would still have the bond giving you a, either a slightly negative or even a positive return, uh, simply because the volatility of, of bonds is significantly lower. So the equities and, and bonds go um, on different parts of the risk and return spectrum where equities are riskier, providing potentially higher returns and fixed income have uh, lower risk and potentially lower uh, returns. Now, this another example of a fixed income. This is the Emerging Markets Local Currency ELD ETF, which is a standard deviation that's significantly higher than the SHY. And... Um, whereas the total return is almost the same. So 1% SHY was returning. This is about 1%, actually less than 1%. So with the emerging markets, the investors have taken significantly more risk. However, they had to settle for the same amount of return or even less of a return. So just because we, you know, people invested in a higher risk security doesn't mean that they ended up earning a higher return. It just means that there's a potential to earn a uh, higher return, but not necessarily. Now, this is an example of an index investment, and this is S&P 500, which has a standard deviation, if you notice, slightly higher than the emerging market bonds, uh, but the return is 16% for the 2019. So this is the entire S&P a 500 market, which a lot of people use this as a benchmark uh, for their portfolio, portfolio uh, performance. And uh, for a standard deviation that's less than 1.7% uh, or slightly higher than 1.7%, the total return of 16% is significant. Now, if you look at an international comparison, this is EEM, and EEM is um, iShares MSCI Emerging Markets ETF. This actually is considered to be a relatively higher risk emerging markets equity uh, ETF. If you look at the holdings, you'll find that you have uh, companies from China, uh, Korea, and, and so on and so forth. So um, based on that, the standard deviation of EEM is higher than uh, S&P 500, but the return is significantly lower. So S&P 500 returned about 16%. Emerging markets returned only 
five and a half percent. So naturally, for anybody investing at a higher risk uh, portfolio, uh, they would have expected a higher return, but they ended up earning uh, about one third the return um, compared to S&P 500. So if you compare them all, uh, the standard deviation side by side, you'll see that Apple had the highest risk and the highest return, and then followed by the S&P 500 uh, that actually had the highest, second highest return. And then the er um, emerging markets had the, uh, the third highest return. Um, so the higher risk is supposed to correspond to a higher return, uh, but then again, not necessarily. Uh, it's just a potential of a higher return, uh, but the actual results may be significantly different. Thank you.